everyone, and welcome back to the Wapet Book Club. Uh, I forgot my lines. <laughs> uh, my name is Phoenix, and once again, I am joined with uh, my good old friend Minho. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, we're behind the the Walmart dumpster this time. Uh, I'm eating more cotton candy. Of course, you are. Yeah, I got so sad. I went to Target to get the rest of their cotton candy of the Valentine's Day stuff, and it's all gone. They have no more Valentine's Day stuff. I feel like I was... Oh, like, really? Yeah. You didn't... There was no more? Yeah. They had separate cotton candy, but it was full price. I still got it, though. It was good. Just... How much is one container? Three. Three dollars. Okay, that's not bad. Yeah. And it's cherry and blue raspberry. Mm. Yep, yummy, yummy in my tummy. And speaking of yummy, yummy in my tummy, we're reading more Harvey X Reader. This little sweet doctor is we're rising up right now. Well, trying to rise up. I don't know. It's complicated because he's our doctor. Yeah, it's gonna violate some laws. Yeah, definitely gonna violate some HIPAA laws. Yeah. Free, free healthcare is good. Yeah. Well, I don't think it's really against the law. I think it's just taboo, you know? You know what I mean? Is that how it is in real life? I think so. It's like, um... It's like those college kids that go out with their teachers and whatnot. Or other teachers. It's like taboo. But not illegal. Unethical! But not I feel like that's on a different scale than like a patient doctor. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know. I never dated a doctor. <laughs> yeah, I've never dated a teacher either, so there we yeah. go. You never tried to date your doctor? <laughs> uh, no. Oh, okay. I can't say I have. Alright, when you, when you try next time, let me know if it's legal or not. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll let you know. Yeah. Anyway, we're on chapter what? Chapter twenty. Happy New Year. And a Three good old, ago, yes. good old Bill Cipher, risen up Harvey. Oh yeah, it's uh Bill Cipher. Yeah, yeah. No what was her. yeah? What was her other name? Eva. Uh, Evangel. I don't think I'm. Uh, e v a n g e l i n e. That was her original name. <laughs> I mean, replaced it with Evangeline. Bill. Yeah, Evangeline. Yeah, that, that sounds about right. I know we. Had, I know we looked at her. We're like, what the fuck is that name? That's not our name. Her name's Bill. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, wait, I just had one. Where did it go? I had a penny on my desk. Ah oh, shit! Did I eat the penny? Oh. All right, let me go look for another coin. <laughs> you can just go to Google and type in heads or tails. Yeah, but then you're gonna be like, nah, you're capping. Oh, you can just share your screen. Nah, that's so much work. Here, I got a found a penny. Oh, heads but or it's tails. <laughs> harder to type something heads or tails. in like, to find an object. Well, I have a, I have a jar of coins. It's so easy to pull one out. So heads or tails. Um, tails. Well, you're in luck, Minho. You're reading first. <laughs> oh boy. I know, it's what you always wanted. <laughs> Alright, give me one second. You gotta prep yourself. Drink some juice. But this isn't a bad story that you need to be drunk for it. What do you mean drunk? I'm just juice. I know, just juice. Just orange juice. That's crazy. With a little bit of champagne in it. <laughs> No, I don't put champagne in orange juice. That's how you make mojitos. Is it? Yeah, I learned that from my bar days. You were a, a bartender? Yeah, at the, the store I worked at. I, I got to serve people beer and, and wine and then mojitos, which is orange juice and a splash of champagne. Oh. Interesting. Yeah, yeah so was now... What? Was it fun? Yeah, it was. Until I got sexually harassed to the point I didn't want to come back. <laughs> oh god. Yeah, it was so much fun. Well, I made a lot of tips. <laughs> I would, yeah, I would expect so. Yeah, well, 
a girl working behind the bar giving drinks to sad 40 year old men i'm of course i'm making tips <laughs> <laughs> was that the age demographic 40 year old men and who else comes to a bar at like noon <laughs> it's sad men <laughs> did they did they start talking to you about their wives or something some of them were complaining about their wives <laughs> Oh, that's funny. Like, my wife sent me to the grocery store to go get milk, but I might as well get a beer while I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's what I get. Nice. Okay. Chapter 20. Happy New Year. Your first year in the valley was coming to a close, and reflecting upon the past months filled you with a mix of emotions. By the way, I don't know where we left off, so I'm just gonna, like, kind of tell by we're, what I'm reading. I know we did something, we put, we did the tango with Harvey and we're kind of in a relationship, it's kind of like in the air, and then we went to the saloon for like a winter party, I think. That's all I remember. Oh yeah, something like that. Yeah. I kind of remember that. Yeah, there you go. It had been a year of new beginnings, personal growth, and unexpected adventures. You couldn't help but feel grateful for the opportunities and friendships that had blossomed during your time here already. You glanced out the window, observing the sparse remnants of snow as they gradually dissolved into the earth below. The sight brought a sense of relief as winter had begun to feel monotonous despite the cozy moments it provided for relaxation and reflection. <laughs> These sentences are such an upgrade from the Wattpad books I've been reading that I'm just like... <laughs> Kind of surprised at this point. I'm just like, what am I reading? You're like, this is actual literature. I, I know what this says. <laughs> and I don't want to kill myself after I read it. Literally, literally the books I've been reading was, I like her. She likes me. We're happy. Are you referring to the cinematic masterpiece that is Obsidian X Cobblestone right now? I don't know. I've read several <laughs> like that. And I was kind of like, okay, this is nice. It's okay. The, I mean, the, come on. I, I keep mispronouncing this person's name, but Hazeline Images or Imagines is Gazelle is, Imagines. Yeah, that one. They, they're Gasoline. Gas yeah, Gasoline <laughs> Images. You know, English is not my strongest. I went like. to Google and I typed in Gasoline Images. <laughs> anyway, like from what we've read so far, past like now on episode seven of reading this person's book, they're really good at like. Like in, like imagery in their books of really immersing you in the story. Like we all know fucking like Stardew Valley and whatnot, and how like everything is. I, I just love that they really bring it to life of like bringing you into the world like more organically than just being like it's Stardew Valley. You know what this shit is. Uh huh. Yeah, I gotta say that's that's more of a compliment for this person compared to other Wattpad stories. Because, like, we all know the world if you're looking up fan fiction of, like, a fandom. But it's nice to, like, someone puts in the effort. Yeah, anyway, so I'll stop being serious. We can go read, <laughs> read more smut. No, no. no, this is a book critique now, not a read along. Well, it's not a critique. I'm just, like, I'm just praising the eff the extra effort of this person making the imagery and immersing the, f the person reading. You could compliment stuff in a critique. Oh, yeah. I was criti I was critiquing other people because they don't they don't bother like yeah you, yeah you read you watch like Attack on Titan you know what this world is what what the towns look like I don't need to tell you shit mm -hmm. I don't know it just makes me happy <laughs> that this person did that yeah anyway uh, <laughs> the oh the landscape once blanketed in a thick layer of snow now revealed glimpses of the glimpses of the world that lay dormant beneath. The patches of brown earth peeked through, eager to emerge from their icy slumber and embrace the warmth of the upcoming spring. The fading snow created a mosaic of contrasting colors, a beauty you couldn't help but admire. Winter had its charm with its frosty mornings, crackling fireplaces, and serene snowy landscapes. It offered a time to slow down, reflect, and find solace in the comfort of familiar routines. Yet, as the days grew longer and the sun's rays became more radiant, a yearning for the vibrancy and liveliness of spring began to stir within you. You sighed as you made your way upstairs, Milo following eagerly behind you. Mayor Lewis had planned a New Year's celebration for the end of the year, which he claimed would give every villager the night of their life. 
But you didn't know that it was a strict it, that it was strictly true. Mostly, you were just excited to watch the fireworks during the countdown. Even more excited to see Harvey. Mm. <laughs> what to wear? You pondered aloud. Milo tilting his head in confusion, as if trying to offer his fashion advice. With a mix of excitement and uncertainty, you made your way to your wardrobe, scanning through the array of clothes hanging before you. Tonight was an important occasion, and you wanted to strike the right balance between looking stylish and feeling comfortable. A vibrant velvet red top caught your eye, exuding a sense of confidence and elegance. It seems perfect for a celebratory event, while also capturing the festive spirit of the New Year's celebration. Paired with a sleek, sleek black skirt, it would create a sophisticated yet chic ensemble. You got dressed, applied your makeup, and styled your hair, ready for the night ahead of you. Taking a moment to appreciate your reflection in the mirror, you smiled. You smiled. Yes, smiled. You smiled at the sight before you. Finally, you felt fully confident in yourself, something that you hadn't felt in years. Your ex had damaged your ability to become confident, or to be confident badly, leaving you with several emotional scars and worries. Therefore, this was a milestone for you. You stepped out into the cool air and headed for the party in the town center. As you entered the town, you saw the streets and were uh, you saw the streets were adorned with twinkling lights with the air filled with the scent of delicious food from the various food stalls that lined the gathering area. The sound of laughter and excited chatter echoed through the night as villagers arrived, chatting to one another. You approached Pierre's stall that was lined with bottles of alcohol. It seemed like Emily and Gus had teamed up with Pierre tonight. Good evening, Pierre, you smiled. Oh, good evening, uh, Bill. What can I do for you? He beamed back. Can I have a glass of wine, please? Any kind. I'm not fussy. You giggled. Pierre poured your wine, handing you a full glass of red Merlot. Taking a sip, the wine danced across your taste buds, leaving behind a harmonious melody of flavors. You were certain you would need another glass soon. You thanked Pierre and walked further into sight. Bill, so glad you could make it, a familiar voice spoke. You turned to see Mayor Lewis stood next to you. Mary Lewis, good evening. You greeted him with a warm smile. I couldn't miss this New Year's when it looked this, spectac this spectacular. You decided to compliment his efforts, letting bygones be bygones. The mayor beamed with pride, his eyes twinkling with enthusiasm. Thank you, Bill. I've made sure to make this a night to remember for everyone in the valley. We have music, delectable food prepared by Gus, and, of course, the grand finale of fireworks. You admired his dedication to the town. You just wanted to ensure everyone was happy and he seemed to have genuinely learned from his mistake at the Luau. As you chatted to Lewis, you spotted the woman stood next uh, you spotted the woman stood talking to Elliot. You didn't recognize her. You took a moment to study her face, trying to discern any clues about her identity. Her features exuded an air of elegance and poise. You made her eyes out to be a deep shade of green, sparkling in the outdoor lights. Her dark, cascading locks framed her face gra gracefully, falling in gentle waves. She wore a skin-tight dress in a shade of purple that displayed her figure perfectly. You felt a twang of jealousy within you, contradicting your previous found, previously found confidence. Intrigued, you leaned closer to Mayor Lewis, keeping your voice low. Mayor Lewis, who is the woman talking to Elliot? I don't believe I've met her before. The mayor glanced in their direction, a smile playing at the corner of his mouth. Ah, that's Isabella. She's a friend of Harvey's. She's come all the way from Zuzu City. Yo, is she single? <laughs> is, is she available? <laughs> Asking for a friend. <laughs> <laughs> the revelation that Isabella was a friend of Harvey's and uh, had traveled from Zuzu and had traveled from Zuzu City, a place that held significant memories for both of them, caused a pang of unease. Thoughts raced through your mind, fueled by the green-eyed monster that now threatened to consume your emotions. <laughs> a green-eyed monster. Yeah, it's like the Loch Ness monster. 
Except this is a gorgeous woman that's just talking to Elliot. <laughs> <laughs> My second husband. Okay. <laughs> Damn. This bitch taking all of them. <laughs> but why, you asked her bluntly. Oh, didn't Harvey not tell you? She's coming down to Valley, to the valley to work for him in the spring, he beamed. You felt your heart shatter. You prayed this would not be a permanent thing. The realization that Isabella's arrival could potentially disrupt the dynamics of your relationship with Harvey felt like a heavy weight upon your shoulder. Oh, is it just for spring? You interrogated. I believe so. She is seeking work experience for her medical degree. Oh yeah, no, she's probably just just going there, working and leaving. Yeah. Or, or planning to, I mean. Or is she going to take our man away? <laughs> the conflict! <laughs> she's going to take your man, and I no, guess No, it's Elliot. our. We're both Bill right now. <laughs> your Bill. No, your Bill. <laughs> it's like the fucking Spider-Man thing. <laughs> <laughs> your Bill's different. It's like, he's Bill, you're Bill, I'm Bill. Is there any more Bills I should know about? <laughs> um, Harvey made his way over, his smile gradually turning to confusion as he studied your face. You met him halfway, walking away from Lewis. His sweet smile melted your cold exterior as you gazed at Harvey, taking in his appearance. He looked absolutely amazing in his suit, trousers, and a perfectly tailored button-long sleeve shirt. God damn, this man. <laughs> You'll preach it to the choir, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. All right, you can read now, then. All right, fun. Is it because you saw we're halfway through the chapter? <laughs> <laughs> it's hidden me. Damn. What, the, your juice or, like, this this book? You're like, I can't, this is the romance. <laughs> Someone was fucking reading. I don't know how juice can hit me, yo. I mean, only alcohol can hit me. Juice, yeah. I'm drinking orange juice. Well, I don't know, maybe it's high sugar and you're gonna have a sugar crash, who knows? No, I'm not you, with all your <gasps> cotton candy. I cannot believe you just said that. Anyway, good evening, he spoke. You don't look pleased to be here, Bill, he frowned. Brushing your hair away from your face and tucking it behind your ear. Oh, so romantic! <laughs> Harvey, can we talk for a moment? You asked, your your voice gentle, yet tinging with a hit of concern. Harvey turned to face you, his eyes filled with worry. Of course, what's on your mind? He replied. Who was Isabel? Oh my god, we're fucking being like this. She's like, who's that bitch that's over there? <laughs> <laughs> you asked, already knowing the answer, but wanting to hear it from him. She's an old friend of mine from university back in Zuzu City. He replied, analyzing your facial expressions at tone of voice. Oh, okay, he replied, forcing a smile. Well, you knew her name already, so I assume you know who she is anyways. <laughs> he sighed, looking down at the floor. You realize the mistake you made. You cursed yourself in embarrassment. I just don't want anything or anyone to jeopardize what we have. You felt embarrassed again, like you had before the luau. This time, you wouldn't run away, though. <laughs> Sprint. <laughs> I understand, Bill, Harvey replied, his voice filled with a mix of understanding and reassurance. But trust me when I say that nothing and no one will just can jeopardize what we have. He reached out and gently took your hands in his, offering a reassuring feeling. Bill, I understand your concerns and I appreciate your honesty for telling me how you feel. But Is Isabella is just a friend and her coming to the valley to work for me is, is a professional agreement. Oh, I'm such a fool, aren't I? You sighed, a slight smile on your face, realizing your mistake. No, you're not a fool, Harvey said, his voice filled with tenderness. You're someone who cares deeply and wants to protect what we have. I admire that about you. You felt a warm spread through your chest, easing the tension that you built, built up within you. Harvey's words and his reassuring presence reminded you of every memory you had already made together. You realize in this moment that the, there's... That this was more than just friends with benefits. This was something that could develop into love, and you wanted it. By the way, Leah has been at waiting to speak to you, Harvey added, smiling. You beamed back and found your way through the crowd, leaving Harvey to turn and talk to Robin and Demetrius. You spotted Leah. Hey, you beamed. Hey, 
Leah explained, her voice, her face lighting up as she saw you approach. I've been wanting to talk to you all evening. You embraced her. I'm sorry, I've been busy. You giggled. I could see that, she muttered, slightly smirking. You chose to ignore her and instead decided to ask her about what she'd been needing to talk to you about. I have something important to tell you, she said, her voice filled with anticipation. Elliot and I decided to set a date for our wedding. Like, they got married? <laughs> They're getting married? <laughs> Already, I guess. I mean, I guess the seasons are only a month, so... Yeah, I guess this is good pacing, I guess. <laughs> Your eyes widened with delight, and you couldn't help but to squeal in excitement. Oh my god, Leah, that's amazing! Leah beamed her, her cheeks blushing with joy. Thank you. We've been playing and discussing, and we finally settled for a date next summer. Your mind wandered to summer. The warm breeze of the training season and the beauty of the beach in the sunshine. You snap back into the conversation at hand. I still need to ask you something now, she anticipated. What? You eagerly you replied eagerly. Will you be one of my bridesmaids? She beamed. The honor of an excitement washed over you, filling your heart with pure joy. How come I don't get to be the maid like the maid of honor? Leah. You don't know her enough. Yeah, that, that's like Emily's <laughs> thing. Yeah. Feel a little offended, but okay. You feel so. Hey, we're the emotions. most recent to come into town. Yeah, yeah. I guess you're right. I guess we don't get that that honor. They probably all grew up here, and we just like, hey, I'm stealing the doctor. <laughs> Yoink. <laughs> Yoink. Oh, Leah, I would absolutely be honored to be one of your bridesmaids. You explained. Your voice filled with genuine excitement. You squealed. You squealed her tight. Oh, you squeezed her tightly in a hug. Thankful for this opportunity. As the two of you released the embrace, you couldn't help but feel a sense of anticipation and eagerness. Being a bridesmaid meant not only being there for Leah on her big day, but also being part of the planning, the celebration, and the memorable moments leading up to the wedding. We're going to have one hell of a party. She beamed. Oh, you beamed. Leah laughed at your excitement. I knew I could count on you, Bill. Dude, it must be a pain in the ass to be a, the maid of honor, because that's a shit ton of planning that you have to do. Yeah. I think if someone asked me to be their maid of honor, I'd be like, nah, you can give that responsibility to someone else. I'll be in the, the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just be eating the snacks and champagne. Yeah, you got cotton candy here? <laughs> 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 the night wore on, and the time to midnight grew closer. You found your way back to Harvey, who waited for you in the corner, away from the large crowd. You're back, he smiled. I'm back, you replied. You relayed your news to Harvey. His eyes beamed with genuine excitement as you shared the news of, of becoming one of Leah's bridesmaids. His smile widened, and you could sense his joy radiating. Oh, that's lovely. I know, right? I'm guessing she asked Emily and Haley to be her other bridesmaids. You added, a smile escaping from your lips. Well, that's funny, because Elliot actually asked me to be one of his best men, too. He chuckled. What a coincidence, you giggled, secretly overjoyed by hearing this. Suddenly, you were interrupted by a loud shout. Thirty seconds to midnight, you heard Marty beam from the, the center of town. Are you ready for the new year? Harvey added as you made your way over to the crowd, his arm on your waist. Very much so, you weakly smiled, admiring Harvey's eyes twinkling in the light of the decorations. I have something to ask you, Bill, you muttered in... He muttered into your ear as the noise of the crowd overpowered his voice. Right now? You asked. Oh, you answered, speaking loudly as so you could be heard. Yes. You turned to face Harvey. I know this has been difficult because I'm your yep, <laughs> I'm your doctor and you are my patient. He also he also exclaimed, gazing down at you, and all the other complications. Of course, he added. Suddenly the countdown began, cutting Harvey off. Ten. Nine, eight, the crowd shouted excitedly. I guess I should keep this short, he chuckled to himself, slightly displeased at, with his timing. Six, s wait, six, seven, eight. I think that's supposed to be eight, nine, seven, six, oops. <laughs> I was like, Ten, nine, eight, six, seven, eight. Yeah, it just goes up. <laughs> Bill, he began again, his beautiful eyes gazing at yours, his hand brushing against yours. Five, four, Yes, you answered. Three, two, one. Will you be my girlfriend? Alright, now you get to read. 
What do you think about that? He's gonna say yes, because it, it says it right here. <laughs> oh, wait. Well, wait, actually it doesn't. From what I see on my screen, it does actually, it does not. It just carries on and there's a two paragraphs. <laughs> I think we should say yes. Next what do you chapter. Mean it carries on? Well, next chapter. Uh -huh. Well, they kind of copy and pasted where the last chapter ended off, and there's now two paragraphs that I can see, but I don't know. Maybe we'll say yes. I hope so. Okay. We better. I'm going to continue from the second paragraph. Alright. Uh, as Harvey's. Oh, chapter 21. One year later. Yeah. Wait, no, this isn't one year later yet, though. This is just still yeah. on the previous chapter. Yeah, I mean, it just struck midnight, so technically it's been a whole year. Oh. Yeah, that's writing. As, my as Harvey's words hung in the air, time seemed to slow down. It felt as if the world around you had stopped. Never had you imagined that this thing, that this, this of all things, would happen here. And to you of all people. You never expected to fall for someone. You moved away from the city lights to get away from all that yucky romance stuff. Meanwhile, the vibrant fireworks illuminated the night sky with a dazzling display of colors. Towns spoke around you, cheering and welcoming you in the air. Welcoming in the new year. Bursting in mesmerizing patterns, the fireworks painted the sky in hues of red and green. Casting a bright glow over the town center. In a way, the bright explosions mirrored the fireworks of emotions within you. The spark of hope, curiosity, and the thrill of the night mingled together, creating a kaleidoscope of feelings that matched uh, the vibrant burst of light. You gaze at Harvey, searching his eyes for any signs of hesitation or doubt. Instead, you found sincerity and genuine affection reflected back at you. Yes. You beamed back. As the declaration escaped your lips, you saw Harvey look somewhat stunned. With the ongoing celebrations, it felt as if the entire continent had joined in your celebration. Harvey's eyes widened with delight, mirroring your own ecstatic expression. Or, es yeah, ecstatic expression. A wide grin spread across his face as he pulled you into a tight embrace. Bars. His arms enveloping you in a warmth that matched the fiery display above. Pulling away, you both stood and stared into the sky in all of the breathtaking display, feeling the warmth of each other's presence and the promise of a new future. Wait a minute, they didn't kiss? <laughs> what the fuck? That's a you're supposed to do that for like Happy New Year. I'm very disappointed. Ooh. What do you mean <laughs> according to who? I don't know. Social etiquette, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It's always a How thing. How many like, books have you been reading? What do you mean? It's always a thing where, like, I mean, even like for us, if like the New Year strikes, your significant other, the person that you're interested in, like for the Happy New Year thing, you, you kiss or like what single people do, they actually take a grape and eat it. Where do you live? I can't say right now. We're recording. <laughs> no, like, what world do you live in? I don't know, America? <laughs> <laughs> this is the first time I'm hearing this. Also, they just became each other's significant others. Yeah, and you know what? They, when you, bro, they just explained that they had a friends with benefits thing, but it's weird for them to kiss and, and like, like right now? <laughs> I mean. During a New Year's Silver. Okay, never mind. You keep reading. <laughs> all, right, all right. Happy New Year, Bill. Emily exclaimed running up to you and hugging you tightly, nearly tackling you to the floor. You were certain she was drunk. Happy New Year, Emily, you laughed, returning her enthusiastic embrace. Her infectious energy filled the air, and you couldn't help but be swept up in her excitement. I can't believe you've been nearly here for a year already. It feels as if you've been here for years. She giggled as you both laughed and regained your balance. Oh, uh, wait, where am I? Scroll down. No. Oh. You chuckled along with Emily, feeling a mix of disbelief and nostalgia wash over you. I know, right? It's hard to believe how quickly time has gone by. 
feels like just yesterday I arrived in this beautiful valley and now it feels like home. Suddenly, Emily's eyes sparkled with hope. I have a feeling that this year is going to be amazing, Bill. We're going to make it the best one yet. <laughs> you couldn't help but feel a surge of excitement at her words and agreement. Your mind panned to the upcoming wedding, the new seasons for crops, and development, and most, in and most importantly, the new relationship that had blossomed between you and Harvey. Uh, the past year had been filled with unexpected twists and turns leading you to this moment, and you were ready to embrace whatever the future held. Together, you and Emily joined the crowd dancing and celebrating under the starry night sky. Laughter echoed through the air as friends and neighbors celebrated the joy of new beginnings. Moments passed in flickering glimpses, and the next thing you knew, you found yourself standing in front of your own doorstep. The sense of relief washed over you, mingling with the remnants of inebriation. You fumbled with the keys, a clumsy dance between your fingers and the lock, until finally you managed to push the door stubborn open to step inside. The familiar sights and sounds of your home greeted you, offering a momentary uh, respite from the chaos of the outside world. Now oh, they just went home, I guess. No, I think I think we just went home to our th How come Harvey didn't walk us home? He would never. Not my Harvey. <laughs> Alright, you know what? You write it. You write the rest of it. Nah, I, you think I can write? I can barely finish the fucking Chef X, X Chris that I have in my fucking library right now. You probably write, like, at the New Year's thing and the fireworks explode. And they kissed and made love. The end. Yeah, that would the end. That's how it ended. <laughs> Uh, Milo ran up to you excitedly, licking your leg and jumping up at you for intention. You gave him a gentle stroke, stumbling towards the nearest piece of furniture that could provide that could provide support for your weight. You collapsed onto the couch with a heavy sign. The room spun around you, the dizziness still clinging to your senses. In the soft glow of the early morning light, you slowly blinked open your eyes, momentarily disoriented by your surroundings. As you took in your surroundings, you realized you were lying on the living room floor. The remnants of, la the, of last night scattered around you. Sitting up and rubbing your eyes groggily, you stretch your limbs, feeling a slight ache in your muscles from the previous night's es 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 escapes. Escapes. Escapades. 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 Yeah! I Escapades. can read! <laughs> That's a word. Man, yeah. I haven't seen that word in so long. See? I'm built different. <laughs> Plus one. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Minus one for me. Oh. Uh, memories from the night flashed through your mind, both the exhilarating moments and the haziness of the later hours. That's when you remembered that moment. Will you be my girlfriend? That did, in fact, happen, and it was real. A smile spread across your face as the memory of Harvey's proposal ran through your mind. The words echoed in your ears, carrying with them a sense of vulnerability and hope. It was a moment that had taken you by surprise, catching you off guard amidst the chaos and excitement of the New Year's celebration. You couldn't help but replay the scene in your mind, the colorful fireworks illuminating the night sky, the love in Harvey's eyes, and the genuine warmth in his voice as, you, as he asked you to be his girlfriend. With renewed energy, you rose from the floor and made your way to the bathroom to freshen up. On your way, you noticed a note on the kitchen table. You picked it up. The handwriting was scribbled and cursive. It, it was probably ine illegible. It was written by a doctor. I was about to say, probably like... Probably, like, <laughs> Google Translate for this. Yeah. It's, it's like, you know those apps where it, like, scans, like, containers, like, food? Or, like, signs that, like, translate the uh like the language into yours you had to do yeah, that that's, for it <laughs> that's like the uh, there's the google translate app yeah i actually have it's like, that it's pretty useful yeah it's like spanish german japanese a doctor, and then doctor. <laughs> yeah, exactly doctor <laughs> basically hieroglyphics yeah it's like reading braille man <laughs> <laughs> as you looked at your reflection in the mirror you realized how red your eyes were you had slept in your mascara and it seemed as if some had gotten into your eyes 
He sighed with a slight smile and began to wipe the makeup off gently. He had a warm shower and got ready to relax for the day. Soon spring would start and you needed to ensure that you were prepared. No, I gotta agree with uh, this person at the bottom, Slime uh, Boo 7 of Damn It, I Love This Man. I'm giving you a heart for that one. <laughs> so true. <laughs> <sighs> Alright, last chapter where we're in, uh, ju judging a book by its chapters, like we're doing right now. <laughs> exactly. Spring day one, year two. It's like we're playing Stardew Valley. It's wow. crazy. Spring was upon the valley. The fields and orchards have been remained dormant during the winter months. Now burst forth with new life. The cheerful sounds of the song bird song filled the air as if they were celebrating the arrival of a new season. Walking along the familiar paths of the, of the farm, you couldn't help but marvel at the beauty that surrounded you. The trees, once bore and skeletal, now wore a fresh coat of vibrant green leaves, casting dancing shadows upon the ground as a, as a gentle breeze rustled through their branches. The delicate petals of cherry blossoms and tulips adorned the landscape, adding splashes of pinks, whites, and yellows to the scenery. Your animals could finally leave their winter pens and explore the, f the fresh of the season. The sight of their eager anticipation and the joyful moos, oinks, and belks filled the air as you swung open the gate, allowing them to venture out into the fields. The chickens with their fluffy feathers rustled back the gentle breeze, happily stretching as the soft at the soft earth, pecking at the tender shoots and insects that emerged with the changing season. The immersion! <laughs> It's That's a great. lot of imagery. Bro, I mean, this is kind of how I feel after winter in, in like, Stardew Valley. I'm like, finally, there's other colors other than white and blue. <laughs> <laughs> you were certainly, you were certain that this would be a good year for you. You had everything you needed and more right here before you. Honestly, the next year when you do, like, spring, because actually you know what you're doing and you have more experience, it's like a breeze of, like, now you got all this money, you can have a bigger crop. You got sprinklers. Uh huh. Yeah. Honestly, I, I feel Bill in this. I'm like, yes, I could do more shit. I can fish. <laughs> With a sense of excitement and anticipation, you made your way to the clinic to visit your new boyfriend. The spring air was crisp and refreshing, invigorating your senses as you walked along the familiar path towards the heart of Pelican Town. I, I did say that right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those were. Yeah, yeah. Nice. <laughs> you swung open the doors, a feeling of warmth inside of you. You were greeted by the sight of a tall blonde with peachy lipstick giggling with your boyfriend behind the reception desk. Oh, you had forgotten about her. Isabella. <laughs> uh-huh. That bitch is gonna take my boyfriend. <laughs> Taking a deep breath, you compose yourself and approach the reception desk, trying to hide any signs of an unease as you lingered beneath the surface. As you got closer, you noticed, the, you noticed the genuine joy radiating from Harvey's face, and how Isabella seemed genuinely amused at whatever he had to say. Hello, you greeted them, mustering a smile as you, you hope concealed your inner turmoil. Harvey glanced your way, smiling. Isabella's smile faded as her eyes lit up with recognition as she turned to face you as, she already, as if she had already met you. Oh, hello! You must be Bill! She said, extending her hand as a friendly gesture. I've heard so much about you! It's nice to meet you! Oh wait, I feel like Isabelle is a bitch. I should probably change her voice. <laughs> oh. Wow. What an assumption. Yeah. Sure it is, you said to yourself. This is Isabella. Bill? Isabella, this is my friend Bill. Harvey interjected. Wait a minute, he called us his friend. I'm so sad. <laughs> Bro, we just started dating yesterday and you were your friends. <laughs> Harvey interjected. You notice his interesting choice of words. Friend? You said to yourself. You can your composer already cracking. Harvey has told me so much about you, she spoke, breaking you out of your haze. <laughs> it's nice to meet you. I'm the local farmer, he replied, feeling very reluctant to even continue the conversation. All right, that must be a difficult job. I admire you. 
You trade glamour for muscles, she smirked. You couldn't help but feel a pang of annoyance at Isabel's comments. However, you took a deep breath and reminded yourself to stay composed and not let her words get to you. Thank you, you replied, maintaining a polite tone. Farming may not be glamorous, but it's fulfilling in its own way. Working land, tending the animals, and providing for the community brings its own rewards. Isabel raised an eyebrow, seemingly intrigued by your response. I suppose you're right, she conceded, a hint of surprise and evident in her voice. Yeah, that's what it sounded like on my end. Yeah. Harvey, sensing the tension, interjected with a smile. Uh, both farming and medical work have their own challenges and rewards. It's great that we have our own different passions and contribute to the community in our own way. He seemed, he seemed just as stressed as you were, but you would never let, but he, but you would never let that show. You nodded, appreciating Harvey's attempt to defuse the situation. Absolutely. Oh, sorry. Absolutely. You agreed, offering a small smile. Anyways. I only came to check on my friend here, so I'll be on my way. You shot back wistfully, uneasy at this interaction. Harvey sighed, knowing the mistake that he made. The brief encounter with Isabel left a bitter taste in your mouth, and you couldn't shake off the lingering disappointment. Harvey's sigh hung in the air, a clear indication that he recognized his messed up. <laughs> Called us. Why, bro? You, we just started going out. You call me your friend? That's like if I introduced Cameron as my friend. That would probably piss him off. <laughs> I should get back to work too. Isabel giggled. Hope I see you around, babes. You, she spoke, leaving, uh, leaping into the back of the clinic. You met eyes with Harvey. He began to walk towards the exit, but before you could step out, Harvey called after you. His voice filled with regret. Bill, please wait. You could hear the desperation in his voice. You paused, playing your options. A part of you wanted to escape the uncomfortable situation and sort, of, and sort through your feelings alone, but another part knew the importance of addressing the issue head on. Turning back to face Harvey, you replied, your voice tinged with a mix of frustration and vulnerability. Harvey, I appreciate your concern, but right now I don't want to talk. I'll be fine. Don't worry. Ooh. Ooh, yeah, <laughs> that, that stung. <laughs> You replied bluntly, exiting the clinic and not looking back. You sighed as you left. Your body felt tense. You didn't want to start a new year off like this, and you certainly didn't want to start your new relationship off on this manner either. Pushing open the door to Pierre's, you strolled down the aisles, taking in the, vari the variety of seeds available in spring. After carefully considering your options, you selected an assortment of seeds that would be perfect for your first spring crops. Parsnips, cauliflower, uh, rutabar, yes, and garlic made their way into your basket, along with a array of turlus? Tur what? <laughs> An array of crop like green beans. <laughs> you couldn't wait to see th th these seeds transform into thriving plants, ready to be harvested and enjoyed. You tilted the the farm's soil and began to plant your first seed of the year. You took, it took you back to the first daunting days of the valley, reminding you of the excitement, uncertainty, and the daunting challenges you had faced. You couldn't help but recall the initial anticipation you felt when you first arrived in this quaint, unfamiliar place. The vast expanse of land waited to be transformed into a thriving farm was overwhelming. The task ahead seemed impossible to complete, and you questioned whether you were capable of turning this patch of dirt into a uh, prosperous harvest. But you persevered and succeeded. Soon, the sun, uh, the sun set above the valley. You had worked hard and felt pride over what you had achieved. However, you couldn't help but feel lost in, this, lost in spite of what had happened earlier at the clinic. Your encounter with Isabella at the clinic still lingered in your mind, casting a shadow over your triumphs. Your, the uneasiness in your heart overshadowed the pride that you should have felt, and it, it left you questioning your place in this new chapter of your life. Isabella ensembled everything you had hated about the city. Her confidence and glamour demeanor matched with her apparent disregard for the simplicity and authenticity of the royal lifestyle felt all too familiar. Maybe you just were just being insecure. But what about Harvey, you thought? You still needed to talk to him. 
<laughs> With the oh boy, I'm like, I feel like I forgot to breathe. <laughs> With, with the thoughts of Harvey swirling in your mind, you knew that you needed to have an honest conversation with him. He had been he had been the source of support and understanding in the past, and you hoped that he would be able to provide the same assurance now. You refused to let this get in between you already. You climbed into bed and turned out the bedside light. Milo curled up next to your feet. Good night, buddy, you sighed, giving him a final pat on the head. Was being official a mistake after all? Oh, what a cliffhanger to enough one! <laughs> oh, no. Oh, jeez. Oh, this is gonna be a mess! What do you think? <laughs> what, what do you think of this? Uh, it's... It's definitely the Harvey X-Rater I know. Dude, it's, what a cliffhanger, man. What's going on? I can't wait for in between our, our next reading of this for this book to be updated like three times. <laughs> It's like a TV show drama. Yeah, I'm gonna look after this because it hasn't updated in a while. So maybe I'll look and see if it actually is listed complete. If it is, then we don't uh -huh. have to worry about it updating anymore. <laughs> but then it won't be our One Piece anymore. I don't know. But I, I don't know. I'm very excited to read more of this. I, I, I want to see what happens with Isabella. Is she gonna try taking our man away? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm very excited. But all right, let's let's. We should probably see what uh, we're going to do next. All right. Hopefully, it's something good. Like, uh, wh where is it? Uh, Waluigi X Rosalina. What a good book. <laughs> yeah, or Scooby Doo. Ah, uh, yeah, that one's good too. I got I got so many lines to read from Scooby Doo. <gasps> Oh my god. <laughs> I don't know what we're gonna read. It would be too obvious to do another Harvey X reader. <laughs> oh shit. I don't know. I never know what to read. <laughs> you don't have to decide right now. Yeah. It could be anything. I can make you read another Harvey X reader. We can do Scooby Doo. We can start a new book. Like an X reader. Or like Vox X reader. Who knows? Hmm. Oh, so many choices! Why do I get free will? <laughs> it's gonna be a nightmare. <laughs> Alright, so whoever wants to read more of this Harvey X Reader thing, I'll have a link down below in the description. This is a really good read. The writing is like 10 out of 10. The Im like the imagery that this bitch writes is so fucking good. I remember us reading- Yeah, Kathleen Images is a really good writer. Yeah, fucking- it was one chapter that we read, it was like the beginning of fall, and they did such a good job with the imagery of like the like the low leaves and the environment of like the, the red and orange tones casting on the land. Dude, that emergent was so good. I think you stopped reading and you're like, damn, this is fucking, this is really fucking good. Oh yeah, that one? Yeah, I think, yeah, it was you reading and you, you stopped reading and you're like, oh my god, this is fucking amazing. I don't think you said it like that. I don't think you ever like cuss, <laughs> but but you were amazed by it. I think it was, yeah, it was like good imagery. Yeah. So highly recommend this. This is fucking S tier, and that's coming from me. And I read two hundred books in my lifetime, <laughs> at least. <laughs> but uh, but thank you, Minho, for joining me behind the dumpster for this uh, Wattpad book club reading. I really appreciate it course yeah i can't wait to read more and i'll hopefully find a good enough book to to carry off of the harvey thing hopefully Ugh. all right well check out the other playlist of uh, like all the other books that i read with other guests and whatnot some of them are good like the troll story one that one's pretty cool uh anyway <laughs> my name is phoenix that was minnow and we'll see you guys next time bye bye